first of all, welcome to the session. And uh, I would really like to start by, you know, introducing uh, myself. I am Vishnu Vijay, proud and trammer and the faculty for your uh, performance management paper, as well as I also take a few other papers such as advanced performance management, audit and assurance and advanced audit assurance as well. So, uh, and I've been, you know, teaching for quite the past few, uh, past few years as well. And uh, as for my professional experience, I work for a big four uh, firm, uh, you know, full time and, uh, you know, been guiding students for quite a few years now. So uh, I'd also like to know about you two as well. So uh, can, Divya, can you please introduce yourself? No Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm an ACC student and uh... I came from CA background and I switched from CA to ACCA and mm -hmm. I am already graduate student. I am graduated become honors mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so I got six exemptions and uh, I am starting from PM and FM and both subjects I took from you only from Fintram Global from Disha ma'am okay. and from you. Mm -hmm. So right. okay. my main motive for uh, this Zoom meeting was to uh, take guidance from you about how can I uh, like my uh, attempt is September 2022. So mm -hmm. I have to cope up with both the subjects and I want your guidance and plan. How can I just do it? Okay. Okay. So uh, that's great. And where are you based out of? I am based from uh, in Punjab. Punjab. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. And yes, we will be, uh, you know, discussing, you know, a plan which you can uh, incorporate for the upcoming months as well. That's, uh, that's uh, yes, great so. that you remind me, reminded me that. So, uh, Ruchi, can you uh, go? Hello, sir. Uh, so, uh, I'm a working professional. I have already cleared <laughs> uh, from ACC and then FM. I did self-study for those papers, but... Uh, I could not clear, uh, I mean, uh, performance management three times. Just by a mm -hmm. few marks, I got failed. Only four or five, some something like that. But yes, mm -hmm. I I took admission uh, in Fintran classes in June. I, I'm, I'm already going through your lectures and it is really helpful, especially the tricky theory part. Sometimes mm -hmm. because I observed in exams, in theory part, uh, the, the true or false were uh, mentioned that uh, we got we got confused. Mm -hmm. Yes, the way you are explaining the things, it is really helpful. And my, I think my concepts are getting more clearer than before. Okay, Thank you okay. That's, that's, that's good to know. So where are you based on? So uh, right now I'm working in Gurugram. Uh, mm -hmm. My hometown is in Kanpur. Okay. So what are you working as? I'm working as an assistant manager at Deloitte. Okay. Okay. That's uh, good to know. Uh, and Divya, are you a full-time student or are you a working professional as well? No, sir. I worked for approximately five months only in Gurgaon based company in outsourcing based uh, in mm -hmm. finance and accounts. But mm -hmm. then I took a leave. I thought that I couldn't manage both of uh, study and work. So after completing both my subjects, I hope I will complete and then I will join. Uh, okay. For, okay. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's that's great. Yeah. You want to focus more on your studies, which is uh, great. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so yeah, let's uh, get started with the session. So the main agenda for our session as of now is just, just to give an, give you an idea as to what the uh, you know PM uh, sessions is all about, and uh, you know the exam structures, exam tips and tricks, and what what your you know plan should be for the upcoming months as well. And uh, just to be uh, clear with uh, one thing, you're, I know that you're all based out of Gurgaon, but, uh, you know, I personally am not a Hindi speaker, so, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, fully in English just to give you a heads up on that. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen once. So first of all, let's understand as to what performance management is. But yeah, before that, I also want your update on your current status since you both, you know, signed up for the sessions. I'd like to understand what your current status is as well. So, Ricky, if you can uh, explain that real quick. I mean, how much sessions have you watched as of now or uh, Ruji? Sir, sir I, uh, today only I purchased your uh, that oh, yeah, okay. plan for performance management. Oh, okay. I, okay. I saw at least four to five lectures of Disha, ma'am. But uh, for your, I purchased mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, no problem. And Ruji, what about you? Yeah, so I saw uh, six lectures of yours, still relevant uh, uh, costing. I watched your videos and I already mm -hmm. 
solve that uh, one performance management question set for part part one. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, except relevant question, I did all the questions, and wherever mm -hmm. I got stuck, I watched your videos, and then I reworked on it. Okay. Okay. That's uh, great. I just wanted to, you know, know where you are. Have you watched it entirely? Because if you have already watched it entirely, then, you know, a few of this, the portion of this video is going to be a bit, you know, uh, a bit boring for you. Too. So, yeah. Uh, so just wanted to uh, give you an overall idea as to what the performance management is. So what is performance management? This is something that I've already, uh, I believe you already know. It's as the name suggests, it's the ma it's managing the performance of the organization itself. And that is exactly what you will be learning through the various syllabus areas that we have throughout uh, throughout this particular paper. And uh, one thing that I like to emphasize here is basically that, you know, there are students who think that the PM paper is uh, primarily or majorly about all the calculations that we learn, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, because when it comes to the PM paper, it's like 50% discussion and 50% calculation. Calculation is important, but uh, the discussion or the theoretical aspects are equally important. And if you ask why, well, that basically that's basically because if you uh, it's it's basically uh, test your logical thinking. I mean, uh, the uh, logical thinking skill is a bit more important when it comes to the PM paper. And if you want to understand how the numbers work, then you will have to understand the meaning behind the numbers, right? So that's basically why uh, theory should be given equal importance here as well. So. Uh, Another aspect of the uh, performance management would be that, uh, you know, when you're practicing questions, don't just focus on uh, the calculations or, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the MCQs or uh, section C questions, which involves the uh, calculations. Don't just focus on that, but also uh, try to type in your answer or practice by typing in the theoretical answers as well. Because you might, you know, get the particular answer easily when you read through it. Yes, that's obviously possible. But when it comes to the exam, it, it may not, you know, quickly come up in your mind. So which is exactly it's it, why it's equally important to practice the theoretical questions as well. So when I say practice, I mean to type down your answers. I like to say write down, but, you know, that's a bit outdated now. So, yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. <clears throat> so first of all, let's uh, quickly go through the syllabus of PM. Now, uh, the first syllabus area that we have is part A, which is information technologies and system for organizational performance. And this particular area is regarding all the, I would say, uh, latest industry updates that has uh, happened uh, within the business era as of now. And it primarily focuses on the topics such as inf uh, information systems, data analytics, et cetera. And uh, if you are, let's say in the future, you know, planning to uh, upgrade to the or plan to attend the advanced performance management paper as well. There's a lot of in detail or in depth, uh, you know, concepts or technological concepts that has been, that has come up within the syllabus of uh, APM as well. So uh, this particular syllabus area focuses on the basics of that particular set of topics. Now, uh, it's, a, it's a complete theory uh, based syllabus area uh, as you may have, uh, you know, uh, known by watching through the lectures and uh, I believe the primary questions that can come up in the exam would be in the uh, section E or section B areas as well. That's something that uh, we can expect uh, from this particular syllabus area. No, I, I don't think there would be much section C questions because that's focused on various other syllabus areas. Primarily it can be tested as uh, you know MCQs. That's uh, something to keep in mind. Now moving on to the next one, we have part B, which is specialist cost and management accounting techniques. So this is basically the costing related, uh, you know, uh, aspects that uh, you're going to learn. So you're going to learn the traditional, uh, you know, method of costing, such as absorption costing, which you may have, you know, learned about in various other uh, courses or various other uh, graduate degrees as well. Uh, you will learn about the basic stuff and a bit more uh, advanced stuff as well. Uh, so you're going to learn about uh, primarily about the uh, ABC, uh, activity-based costing. And then there would be, you'll learn about life cycle costing, you'll learn about, uh, there's another one, yeah, target costing, et cetera, environmental costing, et cetera. So these are the uh, costing techniques that you will be learning here. And it's all about, you know, uh, determining the cost or allocating costs to various departments or determining the price of a particular product. That's basically as to what the syllabus area primarily focuses on. And then we come across part C, which is uh, decision-making techniques. 
So when it comes to uh, decision-making techniques, this particular syllabus area is one of the core syllabus areas, I would say, because uh, you can expect questions to come up uh, in the section C from this particular uh, syllabus area. So uh, it's it's really important that you you know practice a lot of like scenario based or case study questions uh, in this particular set of topics. And speaking more about the content here, it's basically as I uh, stated earlier, it's all about the logical thinking here. So you will be required to make the best decision in a given scenario, and uh, there are a lot of techniques in doing that. For example, if you are determining uh, the best, let's say, order of manufacturing then what are the things that you should consider? What are the, uh, how do you determine or what to prioritize best? Or how can we maximize profits by efficiently, uh, you know, uh, providing a recommended order? So th these are the kind of things that you can uh, expect from this particular syllabus area. And more and about that, you know, there you would be, uh, you know, taking some managerial decisions in organizations. So uh, in order to, uh, whenever you make a decision, it has to be an informed decision, right? So in this particular scenario related questions from this particular syllabus area, what you have to understand is that you have to assess all the information provided to you. That's, that's something of a key nature that you should always keep in mind, especially when practicing the questions. So whenever you are reading a scenario or reading through a particular, let's say, case study question, you should uh, definitely highlight all the important information and use that information, use every, uh, any and every information that has been provided in the scenario to answer that particular question or uh, to make a particular decision. So yeah, uh, that's it again another aspect, moving on. The syllabus part D, which is budgeting and control. Budgeting is uh, kind of an easy topic. At the same time, there's, uh, I would say, uh, a greater content to this particular syllabus area. That's the, uh, or the, I wouldn't call it the difficult part, but yeah, compared to all the other syllabus areas, it's a bit lengthier as well. So uh, the concepts are kind of easy, but if you face any issues in uh, various aspects, such as, uh, let's say, learning curve, or uh, let's say, uh, method in calculating the uh, learning curve rate. I believe learning curve is a you know a common area where students find a bit difficulty in, especially in the algebraic calculations uh, uh, and things like that. So if you face any such difficulties, just let, let me know and we can perhaps maybe even discuss uh, about that particular set of topics on a live session as well, if uh, that's something that you're interested in. So yeah, moving on to the next aspect, part E, which is performance measurement and control. So performance measurement and control is basically where you measure the performance of an organization. Now, one key thing that, you know, most students uh, misunderstand here is, is the meaning of these two terms, that is performance management and performance measurement. Even though they seem similar, it's kind of, you know, entirely different things. In performance management, we take a look at the managerial aspects, right? We manage the performance through various, implementing various strategies, taking the decisions, etc. But measuring performance is more about, you know, how far have we achieved things and how far uh, have we adhered to the plan that we had. So that's what we're focusing on when it comes to performance measurement. And that's what you will be learning here. Various, various techniques or various uh, calculation methods to, you know, determine uh, the performance level and how, how far have we uh, implemented the uh, things that we have actually planned out. And are there any, you know, variances from what we have planned. If there are any variances, how can we reduce that? So th these are the kinds of things that you will be uh, expected to learn from uh, the part E of the syllabus. Now, these set of syllabus are kind of uh, common and uh, I mean, common in the sense, uh, we have uh, been learning that for quite a few years now. The, the syllabus has contained this particular set of topics for quite a few years now, but recently, not uh, uh, by recently, I mean from the uh, previous, I would say, what do you call it? Syllabus area year, I would say, because KCC changes the syllabus every from every September to June, right? So uh, in the previ previous year, what they did was they also added an additional syllabus part, which is employability and technology skills. So this is the uh, basic, I would say, computer-based skills that you need to have. That's basically all it is. And this is something that we cover. It's, it's not a, you know, a theoretical area that you have to learn by heart or you don't have to like learn what Excel is or what is it, what are its functionalities, et cetera. You just have to learn how to use or how to present your answer using the uh, you know, spreadsheet technology or using the word processor technology. That's basically it. And we have you know, done a lot of questions in the uh, like CBE environment for you to understand that as well. And uh, 
Another thing was that we, uh, it, it's all about using the CB environment eff efficiently. And uh, that's I get yet again, something that uh, that's embedded throughout the set of questions that you have within the video question marathon. So uh, just, uh, you know, note down those efficiency points or uh, tips and tricks, I would say, uh, you know, note, note down that just for your reference so that you can adapt that when practicing questions as well. So yeah, that's basically the entire syllabus of uh, performance management. Now, let me just also give you an update that, uh, you know, since uh, it's the uh, September 2022 sessions, yes, the syllabus has, has changed a bit, but uh, so there's not much change when it comes to the, uh, you know, syllabus of PM, uh, just, uh, you know, what they did was they just reworded a few things here and there. That's basically it. And there's no, you know, major change that we need to adopt. And your the video lectures that has been provided to you are uh, already up to date. I can guarantee you that. Now, <clears throat> moving on. So that's basically all about the syllabus. Now moving on to the exam structure. <clears throat> So now that we've understood what it is that we have to learn, let's take a look at as to what the exam is and you know uh, what are the tactics that we can adopt in the exam. <clears throat> so as you know, uh, PM is a three hour exam and we have three sections, section A, B, and C. And in section A, we have 15 multiple choice questions. Each carries two marks. There's no negative marking or anything like that. It's just uh, two marks. If you get the answer right, then you'll get two full marks. If you get it wrong, then two marks are gone. That's basically how it is. And we, we have a total of 30 marks available in section A. <clears throat> and in section B, we have objective type questions or OTQs. Uh, and we have like three OTQs within section B, each carrying 10 marks each. And yet again, a total of 30 marks. Now, when it comes to the multiple choice questions, most people uh, you know, think that uh, you know, it's multiple choice questions. So obviously you might get you know, an answer correctly, even if you randomly choose some things, right? So that's not necessarily uh, possible here. And I believe a few of you have the experience regarding that as well, right? So uh, it's, all, uh, it's all, especially when it comes to exams like PM or even FM, uh, just to mention that as well. Uh, they, they tend to find these questions within section B to be more difficult than any other uh, syllabus area. That's a common comment that I've received from a lot of students. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. And I would say, in your overall plan of practicing questions, I would give a bit more priority to the multiple choice questions. Try to find out as many variety of uh, you know, multiple choice questions as you have from uh, whatever resources that, that is available to you. That's something that I would uh, highly recommend. <clears throat> now, coming back to the third uh, section, that is section C, constructive response questions. And we have 40 marks available here, which is, uh, which is scored from two 20 mark questions. So yet again, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to constructive response questions, this is an area that you know, students tend to perform poorly as per the previous uh, examiner's report. And the reason being they, they're primarily focused on all the calculation uh, you know, related uh, part of those questions. And uh, let, I can tell you that each and every question uh, when, uh, in this particular uh, section are a mix of both. It has a it has a great deal of uh, calculation aspect to it, as well as theoretical aspects as well. You will have to practically explain, uh, you know, the change in numbers or why it has changed or provide a reason for that. So that's that's something that is expected of you uh, by the examiner. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, don't just, uh, you know, try to read through the theoretical answers, try to practice it, uh, you know, uh, in your, let's say Excel or, uh, you know, word processor, et cetera. So that's the overall exam structure. Now moving on to another aspect that is time allocation. So uh, I believe uh, Ruchi, you have uh, you know already attempted a few uh, uh, exams, right? So do you face any sort of you know uh, challenge in the time related aspect? Just want your input on that. Uh, oh, Vishnu, yeah, uh, on time allocation. Uh, I think uh, I need to increase uh, my speed. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, extra 20 minutes because uh, I covered A section first, then C section. And then when I reached out to B section, I saw that one question left always. 
Okay. Some As in section. one whole scenario. Uh, uh, yes, there are three questions okay. in B section. So one question is right. always left. So uh, mm -hmm. could you please suggest how would I, I mean, manage my yeah, time? Sure, this? Because sure. see, okay. every question is important for marking. And mm -hmm. in spite of uh, the thing that I, I could do that questions, but uh, lack of time, I could not attempt mm -hmm. that. Right, right. I can. So, sir, I also want to yeah. add up on this. Mm -hmm. I gave financial reporting. My results are awaited. Uh, mm -hmm. I did that by self-study. And actually, what I faced is that I uh, spend most of my time in MCQ part, and then I do a C section C part, and very much uh, less time uh, left. So I can't complete both the C section, uh, you know, properly. I can't give much time to that. So my okay. C section always. Uh, uh, yeah, I. Based. So, do you adapt adopt any sort of you know time strategy, perhaps you know when attempting the paper in the previous any paper? It could be FR, it could be I know PM itself. Sir, I like sir, I give FR. So I I now I'm uh, realizing that I should uh, give a section uh, twenty uh, like section C part first. I'm not. I don't think I'm right. Okay. I I'm confused about it. Uh, okay, when it comes to the order in which you can attempt the uh, particular paper, there's no such thing as, you know, uh, there's no strategy as to what order you should attend, attempt each section, like uh, I should attempt section C first so that I can just, uh, you know, randomly uh, round off the answer in the, uh, randomly select the answers in, you know, section A or section B. There's no such order to that, but, uh, well, I personally prefer the, you know, the order that's already given there because I would primarily focus on the MCQs. I'll tell you why. The reason is that initially I would, you know, take some time to think out the answer, right? And uh, comparatively, I can tell you that when it comes to section A and section B, if I'm comparing the section A and section B, or in other words, the MCQs as well as case study, the most difficult part would obviously be the MCQs, right? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It could differ, of course, uh, depending upon the people, but uh, based on the, you know, student feedback from various exams and, uh, you know, from my personal experiences as well, I find the, uh, you know, multiple choice questions would be way difficult because it's, it's all a bit tricky or there could be some sort of trick hiding there, right? A, a tricky aspect to it and information that we may miss out if we're, you know, too, under too much pressure. So that's basically why I would prioritize the multiple choice questions first. So when, during my exams, I usually attempted, uh, you know, the section A and section, uh, section B first and then move on, moved on to section C. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you another reason for that. <clears throat> so let's say that I am attempting section C first. Okay, so I've, uh, you know, worked through all the case study questions. I've presented everything completely, fully, et cetera. And when it comes to the section B and section A, I'm a bit more pressured, right? Because uh, I, I already had maybe... Uh, it's a three hour exam. So I already utilized my uh, first hour to attempt the scenario based question or first one and a half hours for some people uh, to attempt the first two questions. And now I am I could be a bit out of time. That's the feeling that we get, right? So uh, if I'm a bit out of time or if I'm a bit too uh, pressured to write the MCQs, then chances are you'll get most of the MCQs wrong because you, know, you, you may tend to, or there's a risk that you might miss out on uh, a critical information which would have been required to get the correct answer. So what I would do is I would just prioritize the uh, multiple choice questions first because a uh, that's or the uh, the first reason for that would be that uh, you know these two sections or the multiple choice has the majority of marks there. I mean it's sixty marks. If I can perform well there, then you know section C can be uh, comparatively easier. Another reason for that is that, uh, you know, if, if I get something wrong in the MCQs, then I lose out on, for example, uh, you might have seen questions where uh, you have to choose options, right? Like rather than choosing one answer, you may have to select more than one answer in an MCQ, right? So in those questions, even if you get one option wrong, you'll, you'll lose out on the complete two marks, right? You get my point? So initially, uh, I'll answer these kinds of questions and keep it aside. But if I am out of time for section C, what I could do is instead of, you know, uh, randomly, you know, selecting the multiple choice, I would rather, uh, rather than selecting, randomly selecting the multiple choice questions, I would rather, you know, provide a basic answer in section C, which would at least score me uh, maybe one or two marks. 
like for example if you are let's say uh, let's say that you are you only have one more question to attempt and you have like 10 minutes left if that is the case then you can utilize that particular 10 minutes to perhaps provide a format for your answer or uh, you know just write the uh, the basic calculations to get, get at least one or two marks but if it's the other way around, if I'm prioritizing section C, then at the end, at the last 10 minutes, you will be left with maybe five or, uh, yeah, let's say five MCQs, if that's the case, then you can't just, you only, the only option that you have left is, is, is just to randomly select the, you know, options, that's basically it. So I would just prioritize, uh, I, I hope, you, hope you understood my point here. So uh, I hope, hope you prioritize the MCQs first when it comes to the PM exam. <clears throat> now, speaking more on the time allocation, uh, one of the reasons that you have uh, a problem with time management is one, it could be due to lack of practice. And secondly, it could be due to the fact that you don't have a strict time strategy. So let's clear both of these now. So when it comes to time allocation, ACC recommends an approach of using 1.8 minutes per mark. I'm sure that you've already heard of that. But what I would do is I would rather take a conservative approach here. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can, uh, for section A and section B, I would take around an hour and 40 minutes, right? So what am I doing here? I'm just, uh, you know, uh, taking the time as 1.5 minutes per mark so that I can get some buffer time, which I can, you know, utilize a bit more efficiently. I'll get to that. Uh, but before that, so, so section A and section B, I'm going to, you know, complete both of these in an hour and 40 minutes. And when it comes to section C, we have... Uh, 220 mark questions. So when it comes to two, 220 mark questions, for each question, I'm going to take seven minutes for reading and planning and 30 minutes to write the answer. So let me just explain the uh, categorization here. What is reading and planning and what is uh, writing? So first of all, uh, what, why do we need a reading and planning here? Because attempting a case study question is a step-by-step -step approach. The first thing that you would obviously have to do is to read the requirements, right? Because we have to understand what is needed so that we can provide the answer appropriately. So read the requirements, that's, that's step one. <clears throat> and secondly, we read through the scenario, we highlight all the important points. And thirdly, we think of an answer in our heads, right? So that's basically the third step. That's basically what reading and planning is all about. You don't normally just read the scenario and go straight to the answer, but you just take a few moments. It could be 30 seconds, it could be one minute, it could be one and a half minute, it could be anything. It depends upon, of course, your speed as well. So you take this time to just think of a structure for your answer in your mind. And then you start writing your answer. That's something, uh, that's a practice that I would, you know, highly recommend uh, to everyone. Because, uh, you know, write, writing, just reading the requirements, reading the scenario and getting straight to the answer is, even though it seems to be uh, a bit more quicker or more efficient approach, there are chances that you might, you know, forget, forget a point that you had already thought, thought of. That, that can happen, in, you know, when you're under exam pressure. So, yeah. <clears throat> so take seven minutes to, uh, you know, read and plan the particular question and then 30 minutes to write it. That's, that's uh, an approach that I would recommend. And the, I'll tell you the reason why I'm telling you this particular time strategy uh, at this point in time. Well, this, this is basically because I want you to practice this particular time strategy. Of course, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, different set of people, uh, I can, I do understand that, you know, some people are quick readers, so they can maybe, uh, you know, conduct the reading and planning aspects in only five minutes or even four minutes. So uh, I would say just try to practice questions using this time strategy so that you can be, be, become a bit more compatible with it, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. And yeah, you will get uh, a buffer time of, I believe, six to seven minutes, perhaps. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, so maybe uh, close to 10 minutes. So you might get some buffer time close to 10 minutes. And during this time, what you have to do is you'll have to, you know, uh, ask yourself this question, where can I score more marks? So should I invest this, uh, you know, 10 minutes in uh, the section C, where I can, you know, provide some additional answers? Or should I uh, you know, just uh, focus more on the MCQ part. It, it all depends upon that particular, uh, the status that you are in during your exam. So yeah, it, it's always, you know, great to keep that buffer time with you. And of course, yeah, there's also these, uh, questions that you might flag off, right? So you can maybe attend those in this buffer time as well. <clears throat> 
So yeah, I hope you under, understood the strategy. Do you have any questions in relation to this? Yes. Yeah. So okay. timing part, it's clear. One question about the syllabus. Uh, last time mm -hmm. uh, I I read that correlation and regression. So this time mm -hmm. also it's covered under the syllabus. Yeah, that would be covered under your syllabus. Yeah, I I, I am in the process of uh, you know uh, you know including that as well. You see, when it comes to correlation and regression, even though it's uh, like a complex topic, I don't necessarily see that being tested in the past few exam sessions. That's something uh, that I'm still, you know, looking forward to uh, researching a bit more on. So it, it will be, and in the, I believe in the previous session, uh, I actually kind of discussed that in the live session. That's what I remember. So yeah, uh, anyway, anyway, so we will uh, try to include that within the syllabus. Or what we can do is we can, uh, you know, uh, discuss that in a live session. I'll, I'll take a look at it and we'll let you know regarding that. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. So, so actually, I no problem mm -hmm. till now, but uh, I want a, a blueprint type of thing. Like you can uh, tell me that in such time until September, how can I cope with both subjects? Okay. Okay. I, I know exactly what you're asking for. We will get to that. We will get to that. No, no worries. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, we've looked at the syllabus. We looked at the exam structure and the time allocation. Then I believe the next phase is, uh, you know, how to prepare for the exam. So this is basically a step-by-step -step approach. I can uh, tell you that. Step one is obviously to learn the syllabus. And when I say learn the syllabus, I, I don't mean just the syllabus areas that are frequently tested in the exams. I mean 100% of the syllabus. And uh, you know, try to avoid question sporting and things like that. That's, that's, that's just uh, you know, a risky strategy. So yeah, moving on to step two, which is basically to practice questions. And uh, don't just uh, you know, uh, constrain yourself just to the resources that we provide. Just uh, use the exam kits uh, that are available to you or any sort of you know, any other resources from any other of uh, one of your friends or colleagues, etc. Try, try to practice as many as possible. The key here is to, you know, practice the tough questions, not, not the easy kind, but yeah, practice as many variety of tough questions as you can. And, uh, you know, you should allow yourself some time to practice these sets of questions. And uh, during this particular time, even if you're done a bit early with the practice, then you know practice the same questions once again. That's that can also uh, you know help in your preparation. Just just keep on practicing. That's uh, that's equally important as to you know learning one hundred percent of the syllabus. And then there is step three, which is to do the question papers, or in other words, the past papers which are available in the ACC website, because that's like the you know the ultimate questions that you will be faced in your main exam, right? So uh, try to practice uh, as many past papers as you can uh, before attempting the main exams. And along with that, there's also another resource that uh, that's known as the examiner's report. Have you heard of it before? Or is this your first time yes. using this article? You have, yeah, right? I've heard. Okay. I have heard the two. Ruchi? This is fourth attempt. Okay. Of okay. PM. Yeah, of PM mm -hmm. only. Yeah, I could not mm -hmm. clear it. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, no, I mean, uh, like, have you taken a look at the examiner's report before? You have, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and, and uh, uh, I, uh, I got an idea from your videos that uh, uh, the MCQ, which you already, which you just told that it's a tricky part. Yes, it is because in examination, I got confused with those kind of questions because sometimes they they do, uh, did minor changes in increase or decrease in word like that or not mm -hmm. or something like that they did very minor changes and MC, uh, the objective questions were very very tricky the mm -hmm. theoretical part so now it's yeah. clear to me and i am confident now that i will clear this this time mm -hmm. okay okay that's uh, great to know and uh, when it comes to the examiner's report, uh, just to mention for Divya as well, uh, you know, there are a few, you know, MCQs that are, that are mentioned within the examiner's reports itself. And these are like the, you know, the toughest MCQs that has been tested in that particular session. So practicing these can also, you know, give you an idea of the nature of the questions that can come up. So, yeah. 
just to put that there. And then there is step five, which is do a mock exam. And this is a really crucial step, which is uh, because, you know, writing a mock exam not only lets you know yourself as to what are the areas of improvements, but I can tell you myself as to what are your, uh, you know, areas of improvement as well. So just attempt a mock exam. This will be, you know, conducted a few weeks close to your exam. So yeah, try to, try to you know, uh, be ready for that mock exam so that I can get a complete picture as to uh, what are your weak areas and what are the areas of improvement, et cetera. I will, of course, be personally reviewing that and providing you with the improvement point. So yeah, don't worry regarding that aspect. <clears throat> and you won't, uh, you won't receive a generic piece of feedback. Rather, you would be given a very specific or personal feedback. So yeah. <clears throat> and of course, the final step is basically to go write your exam. Yes. I have one question and uh, you talked about step four, that is read the examiner's report. So mm -hmm. where did I, found, I find it? And it's where within I find the it? website itself. Uh, give me a minute, I'll just, let me know when the screen is visible. <clears throat> yes, yes. Hold on a second. Okay. So what you have to do is you just have to go to the study support resources over here click on acca qualification go to pm and then there would be a area where it says examiner's report just click on that <clears throat> and there you have it so these are basically the examiner's report for various sessions so you can just read through these and maybe practice some of the MCQs mentioned in that, and maybe even read through the examiner's report so that you can get an understanding as to what the examiner expects, just for your case as well. So uh, booking your exam is just a minor thing that we just have to you know, uh, worry about, I would say. The more things that you have to worry about is basically, first of all, to you know, focus on the syllabus and you know, what we know. So yeah, prepare well for that. Using the steps that I've just mentioned, first of all, learn the entire syllabus, Practice questions as much as you can. Uh, do the past papers, read the examiner's report, do the mock exam. That's a really important step. And finally, to go write your exam. Now, this is a step-by-step -step process, I would say. You can't do uh, you know, step three first or step, uh, step four first, right? So it's a step-by-step -step process. And there's something regarding a step-by-step -step process that I'd like to explain as well. Can you see what I have in my hand here? Is it visible? I guess not. Yeah. yeah. Is it visible now? Yes. What is this? A board. Board. It's a board, right? Board. A paper board. So how do you make this paper board? So we basically follow a step-by-step -step process here as well, right? So if you like miss out on one of the steps, what would happen? Would you get the end result? That is the paper board? No, right? So that's exactly how this steps works as well. If you miss out on one, then ultimately you won't get the end result because step two, practice, practice, and practice. It's really important because you need to know how to apply your knowledge in the exam. If you miss out on the mock exams, then chances are you will be a bit more nervous in the exam and miss out on a few MCQs. So step, uh, follow this particular step-by-step -step process uh, to its core to, uh, strictly so that you can uh, you know, get your end result. That is, uh, you know, to just clear the exam. Uh, well, flying colors, that's basically it. So yeah, that's basically how to prepare the basic step-by-step -step process. Moving on to the next aspect. One second. <clears throat> so now let's discuss on how to you know plan for your upcoming exams. For this, I'll just uh, give you that uh, blueprint that you're looking for. Well, it's not necessarily a blueprint, but yeah, just to give you an idea. Let me know when I when my screen is visible. <clears throat> yes. So this is basically just a timeline, I would say, or you know, the time that we have till the day of the exam. And as you can see here, the day of the exam is on seventh of September, right? Yes. So how do we plan this? So uh, let's first of all discuss a normal plan that you guys would think of. So, Ruchi, what would you do? <clears throat> so uh, I just prepared my timetable mm -hmm. uh, so uh, till uh, 10th of august i need to mm -hmm. review all your videos all your uh, i mean uh, i need to be done with all the portion papers which uh, have been provided by 
uh, you and mm. uh, go through that the, the also the steps you have mentioned that examiner's report as well and after 10 i just need to do practice practice and practice mm. i need to cover up everything till 10th of august this is my plan okay what about the wait uh so you'll cover everything till 10th of august and after that you'll practice practice and practice that's what the office guy and Vivian? Well, I would try to um, uh, complete the lectures a little earlier because I think mm -hmm. the uh, revision part is really very, uh, I think PM is very complicated. I have listened from my friend, it's very uh, technical. So I usually scare from, from this exam. So I will try to complete my lectures <laughs> earlier. Till, mm -hmm. I thought till 15 July because FM is also there. So both papers. Okay, and, for know, both papers. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was asking. So did you, from... like, uh, just out of curiosity, did you hear from somewhere that, uh, you know, I, you provide, provide these kinds of plan or <laughs> just to, just out of curiosity? <laughs> no, sir, actually, uh, I thought ki, uh, you, you could guide me better ki how to cope with both the exams. Uh, I am mm -hmm. left with 70 days approx. So mm -hmm. in, within 70 days, I like, if you will give me plan, I will, uh, of course, uh, bite by that but if okay. i do self-study then i become a little lazy mm, okay okay <laughs> great okay so uh yeah i'll give you an idea here so for, before i can't just uh you know plainly give you a you know a plan just like that so i'll have to make you think a little bit so yeah let me just give you a background on how i'm formulating this kind of plan so that you can you know maybe create your own as well so the basic idea is to think backwards so what we're going to do is we're going to set our goal or objective first of all and our objective is to attend the exam on september 7th right and uh, yeah i just out of curiosity i i know that one of you are one of you is attempting it on september both of you are right i mean ruji are you attempting it on september or yes yes i will yes right okay okay great and are you attempting any other paper along with it and no, because see, I'm working 10 hours in a day. So yeah. with job, okay. it's quite not possible. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I only give three to three hours in a day to study. And on weekend, I will study around six mm -hmm. to eight hours. So okay. this is my schedule. Yeah, Even if you say you were attempting two papers, I was going to say that, you know, don't do that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do have students like that. Let me tell you that there are students who are doing multiple papers along with the Full time job, but but uh, at the I end, it, small, it, it's, step. it's not necessarily one paper in yeah. one go. That's it's a gamble. Uh, if I were them, I would rather you know put my money in the stock market. So, yeah, okay, anyway, please. <clears throat> Sir, what you will uh, suggest, I should give both on single exam because I'm yeah, afraid that student you're gonna ask me something about the stock market. Okay, so what, <laughs> what were you saying? What was your question again? Please repeat that. Sir, uh, for me, uh, I'm a full-time student till September. Like, I will be studying only ACCA. So, what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. I should go with both exams or should I? Yeah, you can go with both of them. That's fine. Okay. Sir. That's totally fine. You have enough time. And I will, of course, explain a plan to you. And if you strictly follow that plan, then two paper is really easy. So, yeah. Okay. Sir. And sir, with good numbers also, <clears throat> not just 50. <laughs> yeah, with good numbers. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, just to uh, give you that idea and just to give you more confidence in that, uh, I don't know whether you've heard this before, probably not. So uh, I used to attempt like, uh, I once attempted like uh, three papers uh, in a single sitting. Uh, and these papers were uh, PM, FM and uh, taxation. Of course, I was a full-time student, <laughs> you know, wasn't working anywhere at the time. But you know, the key aspect I would say uh to do doing that is to plan everything perfectly and i wouldn't highly uh, you know i wouldn't in, in any ways recommend three papers to anyone because that was really stress, stressful those days so yeah uh two papers is fine but three is just you know going a bit overboard so uh i'll just uh give you a plan i mean uh you know show you how to you know structure a plan for yourself you know i'm not gonna uh, say that do this and that do, do this do this there i'm just gonna Give you an idea so that you can formulate a plan for yourself. That's basically the idea here. So, first of all, I've set my objective that is to attend the exam on 7th of September in the upcoming month. 
And uh, uh, the second thing that I should determine after setting the objective is obviously the strategy, right? So let's formulate that. So I, I'm just going to think backwards here. Now, in order for me to attempt the exam in seventh, I've already discussed what all things that I need to do, right? I should learn the syllabus. I should practice questions. I should do past papers. And I should also conduct a, I mean, also attend a mock exam as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allot the final week for practicing the past papers. That's something that I would do, right? Because uh, past papers are like, you know, the essence or what the main exams would be like. So as long as you're familiar with those kinds of questions close to the exam, it would be better. That's basically why I'm, uh, you know, allocating the time in the, uh, in the last week of the exam. So this week is allotted for past papers and maybe I can maybe utilize this, these weeks as well if I have enough resources for me. Now, moving on, on 15, 25th or 26th, during this week, one of these days, there would be a mock exam. So I'm just going to highlight that over there. Again, it's always close to the exam so that you can get the, you know, you can just uh, get the feeler of the exam or, and try to work hard, work hard on your improvements as well. So, okay. So these weeks, the blue highlighted weeks are basically for past papers and this is for mock exam. If you have past papers for this week as well, then great, you can do that. Else what I'll do is I'll just, uh, you know, budget my exam kits and various other questions for these many weeks. I think it uh, like two, two and a half weeks would be enough for practicing those. <clears throat> so this is for practicing my exam kits. And then there is the syllabus, right? So the syllabus, the methodology or the idea of learning the syllabus will be different for different people. And so is the timings for practicing questions. So you can determine the number of days for yourself. And yeah, it all depends, right? So for example, it all depends upon the capacity of questions that you can do per day. For PM, let's say if, you, if you're a full-time student, then you should do about maybe 60 to 80 questions, MCQs per day. Right. Uh, and if it's, let's say, section C questions, then I would say it should be around six to eight. Right. So that uh, that way. So determine the uh, number of questions that you have and then, uh, you know, plan the number of days and allot them. And right before that, uh, I should, you know, learn the syllabus. Right. So I'm just going to load some days for that as well. <clears throat> let's see from. Yeah, let's take the whole month. So I'm just going to take the entire if uh, so this is the situation where I'm a full time student and uh, and uh, I'm only attempt attempting one paper. That's the uh, scenario here. Now, this is also I believe uh, it, it can also be utilized by a full time professional. I mean, a, a working professional as well, because, you know, even if you have the time and if you are focusing on one paper, then uh, you can just use the month of July to learn the entire syllabus, August to practice, uh, and then, you know, uh, September to do the past papers. That, that's also fine for a full-time professional attempting one paper, which means you pretty. So when it comes to your situation, Divya, I would say you, since you have two papers, what I can do is I can allot each month for each paper. That's something I would say. Because studying things on, in an in a like uh, you know piece by piece basis would be a bit really confusing and honestly it's kind of boring to be honest because uh, you know these kind of the syllabus areas are kind of uh, you know uh, connected in their own ways for each paper so uh, you know studying it piece by piece would be uh, like studying like uh, a portion of PM and then a portion of FM would be really boring and a bit confusing as well so what I would do is I would just allocate each, uh, a month for each paper. So as of now, I have July. So I'm going to utilize the first half of July to learn the entire syllabus for this particular paper and the second half to practice questions, right? And yet again, for August, I'm going to do the same. Yeah, so the first half, I'll be learning the syllabus for FM and for the second half, I'll be practicing questions for FM. And, uh, you know, close to September, you can maybe interchangeably practice the past papers and then attempt the exam successfully. So that's how you can plan here. So the idea here is to think backwards by setting the goal and then uh, you know understand what it is that you need to do and uh, you know plan the number of days accordingly
that's basically how you can formulate a plan for yourself. This is just to give you an idea. So, yeah, you can create your own plan. Any questions here? So, what Pretty. do you think in how, uh, by how many, uh, how many days I should complete my lectures? Like, for your subject? How many days? Hmm. I think the lectures would, there are 20, no, 34 lectures, right? In PM. Yes. Yeah. Right, okay. So, I would say try to attend maybe two lectures per day, if that works. It should take maybe 15 to 16 days. That's basically all it, it needs to take. Uh, syllabus wise, not the questions part, just the syllabus. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> so I also want to know as to what is the level of, uh, you know, time that you can allot per day as well. I mean, yeah. How many hours do you have or how many questions that, uh, uh, can you do per day? That's something that I'd like to know as well. If I can help there. So Divya, can you tell me first of all? So actually, I'm a full-time student. So if mm -hmm. uh, it requires to work more than I mean eight hours, then also I have to work because I have to clear both the exams in September itself. In your case, I don't, I don't, I don't really. Uh, it doesn't necessarily ma matter how much time you, uh, you know, put in here. But I'm more interested in, uh, you know, well, if you're a full-time student, then I would say that you can perhaps attend three lectures per day. Like you can watch, uh, you know, one in the morning, have your breakfast and then watch another and have lunch and then watch another and have dinner, right? So that's basically something that you could do. Yes. Sir. At least and that's something that remaining, I'm assuming you could do. And yes. Sir. And in the remaining mm -hmm. month, uh, like in the remaining second 15 days, so uh, how to practice like from exam kits, like you said, practice questions. So you mean it through exam kits? Yeah, exam kits, the uh, video question marathon, and yeah, that's that. Those two are kind of like enough. So yeah, if you get any else, then you can practice that as well. Answer so exam kit work from BPP or Kaplan. <laughs> that's uh, I would say you know, <laughs> that's a confusing question because uh, you know, both are like really good resources. I would say whatever you prefer. I think we have like at Wintram we have an offer for Kaplan, so maybe you can you know take a look at that. Okay. The latest version of that, if that's what you want. Answer a question. If I'm having a PDF of a previous uh, year, like I'm not, like the latest PDF is not available. So, is it matter? Does it matter? Like, if I'm having past exam questions of previous mm -hmm. year, or should we practice from the latest question? The previous year would be fine because I don't see much changes in the current syllabus. So, I would say that the previous versions would be fine if that's available to you. But if not, uh, it's always, but yeah, I can say that it's always great if you can, you know, practice questions from the latest kids because they have some new kinds of questions which uh, with a bit more, I would say, enhanced level of difficulty or something like that. There could be uh, things like that. So that's something that you can take a look at. And I believe uh, if don't, don't practice questions that are, uh, or don't practice exam kits that are too out of date, for example, uh, you know, questions from let's say 2020 or something like that. I mean, not questions, but yeah, exam kits from uh, 2020 or something like that. Because, you know, a lot has changed since then. And uh, I believe that we have uh, a bit more new set, set of questions available as well. And there are a new set of past paper questions included as well. For example, uh, you see, there's a, uh, I don't know if we have that now, but we used to have this. So, uh, so let's say that you are attempting for the 2020 session. So if that is the case, then in the ACC's website, you may have the past paper questions till maybe uh, 2019, let's say. You may have the past papers till that particular time period. And uh, when you look at the exam kits, the exam kits may have some questions from 2018, 2009. Now, if you're using an outdated uh, exam kit, then you would probably miss out on the past paper from you know uh, in between uh, these two time periods. That's basically that's something that's possible. <clears throat> I hope you get my point. Yes. Okay. So Ruchi, anything from your side? No, yeah, and how much? Yeah, before that, uh, yes, Ruchi, uh, can you tell me how much time that you can load to? So uh, see, I, uh, as of now, uh, I am I'm just doing that one lecture per day during my working days. Mm -hmm. yeah, I that's, covered that's one, of your, uh, one of your video for, for lectures and I mm -hmm. try to attempt 30 questions during my uh, working day. 
and uh, on weekend mm -hmm. i uh, covered up three two to three lectures of yours and uh, attempt as many questions around mm -hmm. 60 questions i would set as a target okay mm -hmm. I mean, up sixty. Yeah, that's, that's I'm sixty fine. from A section, but yeah, if I uh, uh, try to attempt B and C, it won't cover that number because they are lengthy and. It, how many? They, how many questions can you? Section C questions can you do per day, on a working day? Uh, uh three questions per day. Okay. For, from okay. section C. Mm -hmm. Sure. That. That's also fine, yeah. But you know, I try to try to you know uh, attend me a minimum of maybe uh, you know two lectures per day, because it's like uh, you know some sessions are kind of small, like it could be an hour. Some sessions could be two hours. Some yes. sessions are one and a half. So depending on that, try to at least devote maybe two hours per day for the lectures itself, right? Yes. That's something you. that you can do. <clears throat> All right. And I've already, you know, told you as to what to do when there's a full day available. Try to target, as you said, 60 questions is fine. And when it comes to section C, maybe, uh, you know, six to seven questions, six to eight questions, etc. So after okay. uh, completing both the subjects, uh, during the September month, what we should, uh, like, what should I do uh, with both the subjects I'm having, like, so... Then I'm done with the exam kit and the syllabus. Mm -hmm. this, after doing that, during the September month, what revision? Do? Revision so, as well as, uh, you know, uh, past papers. That's basically it. Like Just keep uh, on revising things because you know when you're as per my plan. Uh, that is you, when you focus on let's say PM on July and FM on August. If you are following that particular approach, then there's a chance that when it comes to September, you might you know forget everything about PM, right? So I would say just yeah. uh, you know continuously revise the entire syllabus, and you have the revision videos with you as well, right? So just revise those particular sessions. I would say, uh, you know. <clears throat> on a daily basis, if that's possible. And that's, since you're a full-time uh, student, that's obviously possible. So just revise everything on a daily basis. That's something that I would recommend as well. And that goes for you as well, Ruchi, because you know revision is a really important concept as well. Or I would say uh, it's, a, it's, it's a step that you should embed, it, embed within each of the you know, steps that we look at. So yeah, just continuously revise everything so that everything is uh, you know, concrete in your mind. <clears throat> Yes, and, and one more point, sir. Uh, when do you start the mock exams? Like, yes. It would be uh, one or two weeks before the exam. Yes, because sometimes mm -hmm. uh, we do have a questions and if it starts mm -hmm. just one week before the exams, then it is very difficult to resolve the queries. Sometimes the time is too less the resolving the queries. So I, I would suggest if it is possible to start 15 days before the exam so can i so that i can reach out to you that yeah i have a query in this mock exam and you can have a session uh, with the group for mm -hmm. those having queries during the mock exam so it will be better for us okay that's that's fine yeah we were like planning on conducting the mocks in a, on an early basis as well i'm not sure i'm not i can't really give you a date as of now but you know, they will contact you regarding that. And yeah, I can take this into consideration, but, uh, you know, under one condition that you should be prepared, fully prepared to attempt the mock exam. That's one condition yes. that, yes. Uh, you know, that's, that should be there. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? We're already past the time allotted. So let me know if you have any final questions. No, no, no right? Okay. So there would be, uh, you know, frequent live sessions where we will discuss a variety of things. Sometimes the key exam points or some exam tips and tricks as well, additional things as, uh, as mentioned earlier, correlation or regression analysis or any other technical articles that they've published as well. So uh, I would say just, uh, you know, make some time during your weekends for these live sessions as well. Because yeah, there were, there are students who, you know, like miss out on these sessions and uh, they ask for recordings at a, at a later date, but you know, we cannot, we cannot necessarily provide, we don't have the policy of providing, you know, recordings of any of the meetings here. We, uh, we just use it for our own, uh, you know, internal purposes. So uh, I would, I would highly recommend that you 
set up a set up a, i would say just free up your schedule on weekends during the uh, during the time from maybe 3 to 6 it's usually pm sessions are usually conducted on 3 to uh, 5 during that time period so just free up your time during the weekends for this and mandatorily do attempt it because if you miss out on it then uh, you know I, uh, i'll have to either uh, manually tell you as to what uh, what we've covered on a quick on a quick basis not in detail I can miss out on things regarding that, and you might miss out on various important information as well. So it's really mandatory to attempt these sort of live sessions. And there of any... course, uh, we do have you know more students coming up because it's just uh, June as of now, and we would have some students showing up at July. So you'll get to meet more of your, I would say, classmates or virtual classmates. I would say. So yeah. So uh, if we, uh, if uh, during practicing exam kids, if I have any doubt. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we will be asking uh, during live only if any uh, doubt and BPP or Kaplan in any question. So how can mm -hmm. we uh, contact with you or uh, ask? So, uh, yeah, regarding that, I should have covered that as well. That, thanks for reminding me about that. So uh, you are provided with a WhatsApp number, right? Yes. No? Yeah. Okay. I mean, my WhatsApp number, right? So uh, now I am... I have not been added in the group because today only I there is no group let me tell you that there is no you know group since there is a you know fluctuation in uh the number of students so see the problem is that you know some students come up at uh, july some students can come up at august even and maybe uh you know there are students for different sessions as well one student might decide to attempt for the september some others for december so we can't necessarily you know, if, even if we are creating groups, it's going to be really, uh, I would say there would be a number of groups with maybe one or three people. So that's not like, uh, you know, even if even if we have, let's say, 100 students, if we try to stratify the population, then it, it's a bit, you know, uh, it doesn't work out that way. And I'll have, I personally will have to manage a number of groups. So which is why we just, uh, you know, contact, uh, you know, uh, people individually. So you can, if you have any sort of questions, you can just, uh, you know, personally DM me, you know, in, through the WhatsApp itself. For quick responses, you can, uh, you know, uh, just message me through WhatsApp itself, that's fine. Okay, so I'll see you later in another session where we would be discussing some, you know, perhaps let's discuss uh, key examinable topics or not topics, I would say, yeah. Let's take a look at the key exam techniques perhaps, or uh, if you want me to, you know, take a, as a portion of the syllabus live, then I can do that as well. But I have no problem with that. Or maybe we, let's we take the uh, you know correlation. You know, there, there are a lot of things to, a lot of things that we can cover in a live session. So if you have any sort of uh, opinion from your side, or if you find some concepts to be a bit complex or difficult to understand, then just let me know, and I'll, I can you know either take up take it up in a live session or uh, you know clear it up uh, with you personally as well. Whatever you. Uh, so uh, according to me, rather than exam techniques, you can uh, you can discuss about the exam topics like weekly or whenever you will conduct the live session. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever you taught in your video, I may have doubts in that. So regarding the concepts, we may uh, spend the time in the live session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the primary objective of conducting the live session is so that we can clear your, you know, doubts then and then. But, you know, uh, well, there are uh, like, uh, you know, topics which you, uh, like we will have to, or at times there are some topics where, you know, I have to like prepare uh, in a way that that's a bit more understandable to you rather than what you've seen in these sessions, right? So, which is why I'm t uh, telling you guys to, you know, let me know beforehand so that we can discuss okay. it together. And yep. if, if we're discussing it in the live session, then it's uh, not just one person that's understanding this, right? The others will also uh, be able to understand it in a bit more easier manner. So, yeah. So if you have any such, uh, you know, topics and uh, Ricky, uh, you will also be looking at these sessions as well, right? So if you have any sort of, you know, uh, topics that you find difficult, it could be learning curve, it could be transfer price. Uh, just let me know and then we can like uh, break down those topics and let's discuss it together. Right? Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay, then I'll see you in the next session. Till then, bye. Thank bye. you so much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Sure. Bye. 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 bye.